Turalyon was born to the nobility in Lordaeron, and his father's name was Doris. He studied in the ways of the light as a boy and became a priest, healing the sick and the wounded. He hunted for sport. Turalyon was one of the most venerated priests in Lordaeron by the time of the Second War. When the leaders at the Council of Seven Nations grew divided as Gen Greymane of Gilneas and Aidan Perinald of Altrax threatened to abandon the council out of fear of losing their regional power to unity, Torellion brought the orphaned Prince Varian Rin of Stormwind to its side and called upon the kings to cease quarreling over meaningless issues. If they did not, he announced, then every kingdom would be destroyed and every city would be burned as Stormwind had been and their children would be orphaned like Varian if they even survived at all. Torellion argued that if humanity failed to unite they would be remembered as a people that could have saved Azeroth, but were too proud to put aside their political ambitions. Yet, if humanity did form an alliance, they could change history and become the guardians of Azeroth. These words saw the Council of Seven Nations erupt into applause, even from Greymane and Paranold, and resulted in an anonymous vote to form the Alliance of Lordaeron. Turalyon was handpicked as one of the first five knights of the Silver Hand by Alonsus Fowl. He, along with his mentor Uther the Lightbringer and the other knights, Tyrion Fordring, Satan Death Rohan and Gavinrad the Dyer, were tasked with assisting Lord Anduin Lothar and Khadgar in organizing the defense of Lodron against the advancing horde. Lothar chose Turalyon as his lieutenant, a decision that made an already uncertain Turalyon question his worth even more. The young Turalyon developed a report with Khadgar, who, despite his aged appearance, was roughly the same age as the paladin. Turalyon was also introduced to Illyria Windrunner, the leader of a group of rangers who had been sent to assess the situation by the Council of Silvermoon. A mutual attraction formed between Turalyon and Illyria, one that would bloom into a full-fledged relationship. Turalyon fought at Lothar's side in the first skirmishes at Hillsbrad and South Shore. After forcing the Horde from their initial beach landing, the Alliance forces followed the Horde northeast to the mountain pass leading to the Wildhammer Dwarf's Keep of Airy Peak. Unknown to the trailing Alliance forces, the Horde's goal was not the Dwarven stronghold there. It was merely a feint to lure the bulk of their pursuers into a cat and mouse diversion in the mountains and forest of the Hinterlands, while the main body of the Horde marched on the elven homeland of Quothalas. From this location, the Horde could launch an assault on either Silvermoon or Stromgard. Lothar sent Turalyon, Khadgar and Illyria to intercept the Horde before Quothalas burned. Turalyon led his forces east and then north through the pass now known as Plague Mist Ravine, but they were too late. The Horde had already seized Kaer Darrow taking the runestone and moved further east into the forest surrounding Stratholm. The Horde proceeded to decimate Stratholm as well as the outlying town of Tyr's Hand before moving north and setting fire to the Eversong forest in southern Quel'Thalas. The allied forces managed to halt the Horde's advance into inner Quel'Thalas, but at the cost of many lives and a sizable portion of the Eversong forest being destroyed. Illyria sought comfort in Turalyon's arms. However, the brutal assault in their home convinced the elves to throw their full support behind the alliance, and when Turalyon left Quel'Thalas, it was at the head of the elven armada. They arrived at the capital city after passing through the mountainous region of Altrak, just in time to turn back Doomhammer's siege and then chase the orcs back to the beaches of South Shore. Turalyon and his comrades rejoined the rest of the Alliance army at the liberation of Ironforge, forcing the Horde to retreat to Blackrock Spire itself. The battle proved to be devastating for both sides. In the midst of the battle, he saw his commander engaging the orc warchief Doomhammer himself. Seeing the orc having the upper hand, Turalyon fought his way to Lothar's aid, but he was continuously barred by orc warriors and he could do nothing more but watch as Doomhammer brought his hammer to Lothar's helm. Pushing anything in his way, Turalyon went to the body of his hero, tears flowing as the warchief laughed and cried in victory. Overcome with grief and anger, the paladin grabbed the lion's shattered sword and rallied the alliance forces with a fierce cry, For Sir Lothar, that struck fear into the hearts of even the most bloodthirsty orcs. The frenzied alliance army attacked the demoralized orcs. In the midst of his anger, Turalyon almost killed Doomhammer, but eventually spared his life. The battle lost, the horde retreated to the last bastion the Dark Portal. Turalyon gave chase, driving the orcs through the portal itself, which Khadgar immediately destroyed, seemingly ending the Horde's menace and allowing the humans to rebuild. Only a few years later, General Turalyon was handpicked by King Terranus Menethil II to lead an expeditionary force also nicknamed the Sons of Lothar through the reformed Dark Portal and into Draenor. There it was discovered that Ner'zhul, with the aid of Deathwing, was planning to use a number of powerful artifacts to open more portals, allowing the Horde to escape and plunder other worlds. Upon arriving, Turalyon renewed his relationship with Illyria Windrunner and lay siege to the Hellfire Citadel. Unfortunately, Nerzul had already escaped.
escaped. While they were determined to go after the Mad Shaman and the Skull of Gul'dan, Deathwing was in a different direction. The Skull was needed to close the portal so the Alliance forces split up. Cadgar, Turalyon and Illyria going after the Black Dragon, while Danath, Trollbane, Illyria's Rangers and the Wild Hammer Dwarfs followed Ner'zhul. Turalyon's group encountered Agron and Ogres on the way and agreed to aid in their assault on Deathwing. After a fierce battle against the Black Dragonflight, they managed to gain the Skull and rejoin Danath's forces in a final attempt to lay siege on the Black Temple. However, the Alliance forces ultimately failed to stop Ner'zhul from opening and escaping into his portals, and the subsequent chaotic energy the portals released began to destroy the planet. Rather than risk Azeroth being damaged by Draenor's destruction, the brave paladin selflessly assisted Archmage Khadgar in destroying the dark portal on Draenor. As Draenor tore apart around them, Turalyon led the forces of the Sons of Lothar that were with him through a rift that separated Turalyon and Illyria from his friends. Turalyon's disappearance was not taken lightly by Danath, his brother-in-arms and successor as expedition leader. Trollbane exerted his full authority as the leader of the Sons of Lothar, and they would search from Hellfire Peninsula to Nagrand, but found no leads. Eventually, Danath could do nothing more than call off the search and presume Turalyon and Illyria were dead. Turalyon would later have a massive stone statue erected in his memory in the Valley of Heroes in Stormwind, alongside the other leaders of the Sons of Lothar. Turalyon and Illyria ended up elsewhere in Draenor, in an area of the Twisting Nether that was beginning to merge with the self-destructing world. They were found by Lothraxion, a former member of the Burning Legion who had joined the Army of the Light. Lothraxion told them that they were fated to do battle against the Legion, and he had been sent to find them. However, the Legion had also dispatched an assassin to kill them. After Illyria made short work of the assassin, the Naru Zera appeared before the two and told them that, though the Burning Legion had failed to enter Azeroth during the Second War, they would soon succeed in doing so. Illyria, wishing to see their son Erator once more, pushed Sera to send them to Azeroth to rally the disparate nations to stand against the Legion. Sarah told them that their aid would not be enough, but that they would be needed to do battle against the Legion elsewhere, and were fated to discover the Emerald Star, which held the means to end the Legion forever. Turalyon and Illyria agreed with the necessity of Sarah's request, and stepped through a portal to join the Army of the Light. Turalyon and Illyria trained aboard the Army's dimensional ship, the Xenadar. After many years, Turalyon was infused with the light by Sarah, granting him immortality. He also joined their Council of Exarchs, and participated in many raids against the Burning Legion throughout the cosmos. Eventually, the Burning Legion invaded the remains of Draenor, now known as Outland. As time flowed differently within the Twisting Nether, the 20 years that had passed on Azeroth translated into more than 500 years for Turalyon. Illyria told Zera of a vision she had seen of herself walking on the Legion stronghold world of Argus, and that in this vision she had seen the Emerald Star. With Argus's defenses diminished by their invasion, Zera recognized that there would be no better chance and sent Illyria and Turalyon to discover the truth of the Emerald Star. While they were on their way, Illyria privately told Turalyon that her visions were not sent by Delight, but by another force Zera would object to. Turalyon told her that while he respected Zera's wisdom, he trusted Illyria's instincts more and welcomed any help against the Burning Legion. As they explored Argus, Illyria was struck by a vision sent by the Titan World Soul at the heart of Argus. It was the Emerald Star that was reviving slain demons of the Burning Legion. Though Turalyon did not see the vision, he spoke aloud a pledge to return turn and free the world soul from the legion's imprisonment. When they returned to their transport though, they found it surrounded by demons intent on capturing them. Though they had struck down many demons with the light, their defeat appeared certain until Illyria called instead upon the void, striking down the demons and opening a shadowy rift. Turalyon, who had become one with the light, felt agonizing pain as she dragged him through it to a floating rock far away in the twisting nether. This made at what she had done, he reached out to her only for their hands to burn at each other's touch. Illyria told him that she was not his enemy and to return to the Xenadar, and Turalyon watched in tears as she departed through another shadowy portal. Unknown to Turalyon, who was an Argus, his now 24-year-old son Arathor went to Outland in search of his parents, motivated by dreams he had about his father. Though Arathor did not find them, he found their old friend Dana Danath Trollbane, whom he would pledge his sword to. 500 nether years later, Turalyon had become the High Exarch of the Army of the Light. Though they had spent centuries opening rifts to make hit and run attacks on Argus, the Legion had finally enacted barrier generators to block their rifts. Following a failed assault to try and shut down the barriers, the assassin from Draenor, now reborn from within the Twisting Nether, snuck aboard the Xenadar and ambushed Turalyon. Stabbing him and Lothraxion with a dagger that cut off from the light and prepared to trap Turalyon's soul with a soul stone. He gloated that Illyria was alive as the Legion's prisoner and that she would share his fate, their souls imprisoned for 
all eternity. He was saved by the unexpected arrival of Illyria, who had received a vision of his torment while training to wield the Void. Illyria drove off the Assassin, but could not stop the Soulstone from draining Turalyon's soul. She instead used the Void to rip the Assassin's poison out of Lothraxion, who saved Turalyon's soul and cleansed the poison from him in turn. Turalyon warned her to leave, as Zero would not accept her use of the Void. Illyria refused to leave. When the Naru arrived, Turalyon pled for mercy for Illyria. When Illyria refused to renounce the Void, Zero imprisoned her. Though Turalyon's thoughts were conflicted, he was comforted knowing that he would always trust and fight for Illyria, and she for him. On Argus, Turalyon survived the crash of the army's dimensional ship the Xenadar, and was saved by the resident Krokul of Krokun. At Krokul Hovel, he met with Prophet Velen and the heroes of Azeroth, and reunited with Lothraxion where he revealed he did not know the status of Illyria. While aiding the Krokul with the Annihilance of the Annihilant Pits, Illyria arrived to help defeat Agonar. The two of them traveled to the Vindicar, the dimensional ship that brought Azeroth's armies to Argus, where they reunited with their son Erator. Afterwards, Turalyon, Illyria and an adventurer set out to rescue Zera from the wreck of the Xenadar. When Zera attempted to fulfill the destiny she had seen for Illidan's Stormrage to the light, Illidan rejected her and Zera consequently bound Illidan in chains of light to force the prophecy to be fulfilled and forge Illidan a new life. Stating that his life was not hers to take, Illidan ultimately broke free declared his destiny as his own and killed Zera. Horrified, Turalyon cried that Illidan had doomed them all, called him betrayer and attempted to strike him down with his sword. Illidan blocked Turalyon's blow with his hand, telling him as fell blood leaked down his arm that his faith had blinded him and there was no chosen one, only they could save themselves. In a reunion with Khadgar, he informed Illyria and Turalyon that Daneth and Kordron were both still alive, though he did not get to see them as often as he would like. The three agreed that when the fight was behind them, the Sons of Lothar would hold a reunion feast and that, at Illyria's insistence, it would be Khadgar's turn to buy the drinks. Retrieving the Sigil of Awakening, a part of the crown of the Triumvirate, attracted the attention of the Burning Legion, who came to Makari to hunt down the forces of Azeroth. Velen had traveled with the Army of the Light to the Aranor Gardens to search for the Crest of Knowledge, called Jaden's Piece of the Crown to the Triumvirate, prompting Turalyon and an adventurer to go and try to save them before it was too late. Velen was found in the ruins of his old home, before the childhood bed of his son, who he asked to forgive him. Once they reunited, Velen revealed that his old friend Talgath was the leader of the Legion's presence on Makari and aimed to take the Crest of Knowledge beyond their reach. At Kil'jaeden's terrace, they learned that long ago Kil'jaeden had thrown the crest in the seat of the Triumvirate to rot alongside the Naru Lura. After Velen recalled the day Sargeras came to the Eridar, Talgath arrived to confront his old friend. Talgath commented on how unlike Velen it is for the Prophet to stand his ground, but that it was a welcome change of pace. Velen attempted to reach a peaceful solution and told Talgath to stand down, but Talgath refused. During the battle, Talgath taunted Velen, telling him how his departure wounded Kil'jaeden and how cold Velen had been leaving his wife and son behind. When Talgath was about to lose, he attempted to flee, but Velen bound him with chains of light. Velen once more tried to get Talgath to help him find the Crest of Knowledge, but Talgath responded that they were too late, and not even the light could escape the seat of the Triumvirate where the Crest was hidden. Afterwards, Velen killed his old friend with a burst of holy magic. With Talgath defeated, Velen realized from Talgath's words that the Naru Lura had fallen to the void. This concept was a foreign one to Turalyon, who thought it impossible for Naru to fall to darkness. As Velen explained, there was much more Zera had not wanted Turalyon to know. Illyria and an adventurer would be the ones to break into the temple, defeat Lura and retrieve the Crest of Knowledge. After Sargeras is imprisoned by the Pantheon at the seat of the Pantheon, Turalyon talks about how part of him never expected to see the day the battle was over, after so many battles and so much loss. Returning home to a world he hasn't walked on in a thousand years worries him. His old life is long past, but it is time to build a new one and to get to know the son who embodies everything he fought for. If you liked this video and liked what I tried to do here on this channel, consider subscribing. I'm sure I'll pop up in your home feed every now and then if you do. And leave a like if you want to. It gives me an idea of how well received this specific video was, and as a bonus it helps me reach new people too. If you didn't enjoy the video, then feel free to leave a dislike. If you have any ideas, suggestions for other video topics, leave them in the comments down below. I'll be sure to read them all and not totally steal those ideas for another video. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.